Good afternoon, everyone. Live Science in 2012 put out an article talking about volcanoes putting us into a feedback loop with the aerosols. I wanted to jump now four years forward and see the outcome of their predictions. Usually about 50 eruptions globally. Right now, there's been 42 so far this year, exceeding the average. All the underwater volcano ridges, we can't see what's happening, but they're also active. We need to start looking for changes in cloud formations at high altitudes. Stratospheric water vapor, cloud fraction, increases in noctilucent clouds directly related to major volcanic eruptions, clouds behaving strangely, polar stratospheric clouds in unusual locations. This is due to volcanic aerosols as well. We got a drifting magnetic pole. This is 1590 bottom right. Notice the change 2015. Anything in blue is a decreasing magnetic field on our planet. You cannot tell me that there's this many volcanoes suddenly erupting in the 100, 200, 800 year time frame and we're going into a grand solar minimum. They're directly connected and the clouds are showing how it's connected and it has begun. So back in the very beginning of 2012, Live Science put out an article talking about volcanoes sparking in the Little Ice Age. That would also be known as a mini ice age. Now what they talk about is volcanic eruptions leading into a feedback loop where the dust, aerosols, particles, sulfur dioxide, etc. spread up into the atmosphere so much that it starts to create a layer which reflects sunlight back which causes cooling temperatures on the earth. And then the more volcanoes because of a decreased magnetosphere, the more aerosols there are and you get into this full feedback loop. That's what the article's talking about. So I wanted to take a look and see four years after they predicted this was going to start, would we see some effects today? Now one thing they indicated is massive tropical volcanic eruptions. I highlighted in blue the areas massive tropical volcanic eruptions and then at the bottom there, Sudden extreme cooling between 1275 and, and 1300 AD, as well as 1450, another second major cooling. So let's take a look at the planetary alignments during that time. If you jump over to solar system scope, this is 1306. This goes right into Theodore Landscheidt's work of the Jovians lining on one quadrant with the Earth in that same area. These lineups and configurations occur every hundred or so years, but the intensity depending on the leading pair of planets or the trailing pair where the Earth is, a lot of configurations that produce different results. But this one had a significant cooling effect. As well, let's jump into 1450. You can see the gas giants this time are in quadrant number two. The last slide you saw, quadrant number one. But please notice all four of the giants over with the earth on that same side we are repeating that and going into this exactly right now again and looking at the orbital diagrams going out 2019 is when the temperatures are going to plummet due to volcanic activity as well as the grand solar minimum the cooling shall intensify in the winter of 2019 to epic proportions where we will lose crops globally you'll start to notice 2021 we get that whole set of four on the other side and then 2024 is going to be the most intense this is where we get into that perfect lineup where there are two to three degrees celsius drops if not more globally we just need to look for the trends if the magnetosphere decreases having an effect and there's more earthquakes there shall be more volcanic eruptions the average for an entire year is 52. this year we're at 42 already last year had 80 plus the year before 2014 had 87 so you can see that as we get closer to this grand solar minimum intensification the volcanic activity is going to be increasing now what we're looking for to try to verify if this is happening or not is up in the stratosphere above the troposphere we should start to see sulfur dioxide in different particulates starting to create different cloud formations and you'll see crazy clouds in places you don't normally see them noctilucent clouds polar stratospheric clouds and way southern locations just a mix up incredible rain events snow events hail events this is all from these clouds now in addition to the above water volcanoes 
There's a lot of undersea volcanoes as well that we can't see, but they're bubbling away. Now, just these photos I'm showing you here are in the last year of volcanic activity. And I want you to notice how when it does erupt, it spreads. Now, all the combined effect of the smaller eruptions, there's nothing that's been as grand as Mount Pinatubo or Krakatoa. But the combined amount of these volcanoes at the same time is starting to have an effect. And if we take a, a page out of the Climate Impacts of Volcanic Eruptions report, let's just break these down one by one and see where we are on the checklist. Item number one, stratospheric warming. Oh yeah, didn't the BBC come out just last week and explain that this incredible Arctic cold that's coming up in March and April that's forecast for Europe and the UK is because of sudden stratospheric warming. That was last week. Get ready for a white Easter. They are telling the people in the UK and across Europe it's going to be exceptionally cold. Arctic spring. It's going to reverse the entire jet stream. Gee, that's unusual in itself. All in the intensification lead up to the most intense years of the grand solar minimum. That is not coincidental. Global cooling, selected spots. You've seen those snows in Vietnam, 300 kilometers south of Hanoi. Record blizzards in Russia this last week. Snows in Okinawa and places it hasn't ever snowed before. Breaking all kind of records in Asia this year. And those of you in the United States who said, well, we didn't hear anything. It's been warm here. You know what? Asia's been the coldest it's been in over 150 years. Record snows in Japan. Record freezing cold across Korea that made them lose their entire radish crop just goes on and on. Myanmar, one degree Celsius. Come on. Now, these areas that you're not hearing about record snows in Afghanistan, snows in the Middle East, snow in UAE, snow across Saudi Arabia. You are just not picking this up in the media, but there is global cooling going on. Let's stay with it. Item number three, winter warming across the northern hemisphere. Wasn't this winter a little bit more balmy across Europe and the United States than it was last year in 2015? Yet extremely cold in Asia. Reduced tropical precipitation. If you go right across the equator at the edge of Brazil up there in South America, you'll see all the way through Asia as well, Indonesia, etc. Drought. We're taking a look at the drought indices on a 20 year smooth. Look at those last couple years, 2010, drier. This is 2015 fall highlights, Asia monsoon, drought. Summer highlights, drought. Check that one off the box too. Now you can't tell me that that's a five for five checklist there that it's all happening at the same time. Go another step further. Now with the massive tropical volcanic eruptions, you're going to start to see these aerosols reflect radiation back into space. So if that's true, we should start to see changes in clouds, shouldn't we? Well, this is a great report here. The impact of major volcanic eruptions on stratospheric water vapor shows that when you do have a major eruption that you'll start to see a spike in different zonal averages. So, if there's more eruptions in a combined effect of 50, 80, 90 eruptions of not significant 7 on the explosivity index, but what about 80 on the 5s or the 4s combined into one force that then has enough aerosols instead of one giant eruption like Krakatoa or Pinatubo, something like this, we'll start to see unusual knock to loose in clouds, which you have seen globally. It's really starting to increase. Here's a direct result that they've measured of volcanic aerosols related to knock to loosen clouds. Also, let's just jump over to the NASA Earth Observatory. If there's any changes in clouds, we should start to see it. I will give you the year 2000 on the top photo there. Cloud fraction for 2015 on the bottom. Notice any difference? Knock to loosen clouds behaving strangely. This is straight off of spaceweather.com. Another report, impact of major volcanic eruptions on stratospheric water vapor. Here's the most interesting thing. It says the first year after the effect starts that you'll start to see these strange clouds in strange places. So 
That same Noctilucent cloud you just saw behaving strangely was 2015. Polar stratospheric clouds should start to show up right now. 2015, so the rollover year for all the combined aerosols must have been 2014 or 2015 or 2015 at the edge of 2016. We've rolled over into now it is starting and it's going to intensify the cooling along with the decrease in the sun's output. Again, I'll draw your attention July 2002 in the photo on the top compared to water vapor concentrations and where it's concentrating on the bottom. The slide here, stratospheric aerosol measurements due to the different eruption intensities. Again, instead of having one giant eruption happening that will affect the Arctic polar stratospheric clouds, what about all these eruptions combined? 80 plus combined. Polar stratospheric clouds? Oh, we just had a crazy sighting of these all across Europe and the UK just last month. Social media, you can watch one of my previous videos. I did an entire video just on these clouds here. Back to the cloud fraction. If there's any increased aerosols, we should see a change in the cloud patterns. Top, year 2000. Bottom, 2015. Do you see any changes? With the grand solar minimum, we're going to come into a magnetic field weakening. This will also affect and have more volcanic activity and uh, plate tectonics moving and more earthquakes. I'm going to white out on the photo for you here. This image, blue is where the magnetic field is becoming weaker. Red is where it's strengthening and intensifying. Magneticreversal.org, repository of information about this very subject. There are indeed changes going on. Polar drift, the magnetic North Pole versus the geographic North Pole. Please notice they're in two different spots and they're two different things. They're two different animals. We're talking about the magnetic North Pole. Look at the pole drift that there's been. I mean, this is 400 years of time, but look how much movement there has been. And it continues. It seems to be accelerating. If you look middle of the... Of the graphic, you'll see the year 2000, and you'll see 2020. That's the entire distance in 20 years that it traveled in the last 120 years. So it's increasing, moving toward Kamchatka and Russia. But I left links below in the comment box so you can go on these interactive areas that I've been already. This is 1590. Bottom right is where the magnetic declination was. That's the field lines that make your compass move in the direction that is north or south. Notice the change. Notice why they're renumbering runways across the planet because this accelerated movement of the magnetic pole also affects the compasses. Look through any of the federal aviation agencies in any of your countries and you'll notice that they have been renumbering runways left, right, and center over the last five years because there's been a, such a shift that it now affects the way airlines land and take off that they actually need to renumber the degree marker on the runway. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. It's just a cause and effect. One way that you would know that this is intensifying and happening would be all these different clouds that are showing up as well as the different volcanic eruptions. That's all based on decreased magnetospheric pressure because of the particles from the sun and the solar wind decreasing you know, it's down into like the 100 or 200 kilometers per second now. During solar maximum, it's up eight, 900 kilometers per second. We're going to be getting down into no solar wind coming up in just a couple years here. It's going to have some effect on our planet, definitely. With every one of these grand solar minimums, there's increased volcanism. So we're just starting to see the trend again. You know, if you need to verify it through clouds and not temperature, if you need to verify it through number of volcanic eruptions... If you do want to do temperature studies, great, but there's many ways to verify what is happening right now. Magnetic reversals, magnetic changes, the list goes on and on. And for these people at the IPCC to continue to say that it's everything in the world's happening because of CO2, that, that's just fraud. And that is 500 year old thinking. You need to get into the modern age IPCC. You need to quit lying to the people, let them know what's happening. We're all going to have to get a game plan together to get through this because once it gets cold, our food stops growing.
and that's the whole reason I'm putting out the channel. If you like the information in the